<clears throat> what? You got cold? I'm waiting on you. We have a video to record today. But Pokemon came out yesterday. <sighs> okay, fine. So, what are we reacting to today again? Oh. <sighs> Ruby. Come on, nothing's going to happen today. Last week was exposition and all that. I mean, what could possibly happen today that's a big deal? Oh. Hey guys, it's Kanan. It's Jesse. And this is the Geeky Saying Couple, and today we are reacting to Ruby, Volume 7, Chapter 3, Ace Operatives. I think this is the episode that we've been waiting for. Um, they did release a small little clip, well, a, a picture of Ruby and her new outfit and her new hairstyle, so we are definitely getting the new outfits and hairstyles this episode. Um, a lot of people were worried because of the runtime, which is only which is shorter than the last two episodes, it's 17 minutes. Um, a lot of people were worried that since it's called the Ace Operatives that Kruby were going to spend too much time on the new characters than Team Ruby. Um, personally, I don't care much for the Ace Operatives. Um, I think after the Atlas arc they're going to be, you know, unimportant. But um, I just don't want them shoving these characters down our throats yeah. to the point <laughs> where we mostly don't like them because they're taking screen time away from the characters we do want to see. Because um, the show was kind of already crowded a little bit to the point where John, Nora, and Ren barely get any screen time, it seems like, unless it's for comedy or for a fight. Uh, well, there was the John and the Pyrrhus statue in Volume 6, which was really, really good. Um... But the biggest uh, victim of all that has been Oscar, where it's been nothing but off-screen development, which is not a good thing. But they did hint that they had fixed that this uh, this volume. So, but hey, still an early volume, very still early in it. Um, hopefully, our chapter two reaction gets unblocked. <laughs> yeah, it's still blocked currently. Um, hopefully, it's up by the time that this video it is hopefully up next week. Um, but anyway, I am. I can't think of anything else to say because I'm too hyped up. I want to see this episode because of what it could entail. Um, and if nothing happens, oh well. There, there's still the whole volume to go. Um, you got anything to say? I want to watch. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let, let's get to watching this. This guy. All right, gather around. Our mission today is to secure the launch site for the Amity Communications Tower. The designated area is an abandoned dust mine. Since its closure, the Grim have moved in. The good news is all that untouched dust is still down there, too. The science team says they'll need it for the first phase of their launch. Apologies for the mess and for holding on to your weapons for so long. Oh, boy. The upgrades you requested were, uh, well, they were more than I anticipated. <laughs> So everybody got military huntsmen are already hard at work clearing out the surrounding tundra. The recon has identified a powerful geist that's managed to evade destruction and take several lives. After we increased our numbers, the geist was smart enough to retreat into the mine itself, meaning it's old and extremely dangerous. This is our target. Your new weapons and armor should be as requested. But Look at Nora. I took the liberty of reviewing your combat footage from the Vital Festival Tournament. There's some additional oh, there's enhancements a look. I'd like to suggest. Uh, oh, but for now, uh, please should serve you well enough. They also released the this was a labyrinth bit. back in the day. There's all sorts of tunnels John and chambers and the guys can move between. The team leaders. So if we're going to kill this thing, we'll have to split up and corner it. Oh. General Ironwood says oh. <laughs> I've seen your fair share of combat. I trust that man with my life. So tomorrow, 
I'll be trusting you all too. Hey. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ruby. Uh oh. Let's make it like, happen. Skip the haircut. No, she did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, pause. Okay, so didn't exactly go the way I thought it would go. There's gonna be some people mad that they just done a really quick skip. Yeah, but the fact that she actually pulled her hair out and it was a reference to it. So yeah. it was something it's it's not what I expected. Yeah, I was kinda hoping with like some of the like People had a lot of ideas, like, you know, a big dramatic scene of her cutting her hair off. It, the only criticism I have is it's kind of a... It's such a sudden shock. Just the door opening and all, like, the outfit, you know, outfit changes are usually never really, usually symbolic, but... I'm kind of bothered by the lack of explanation for, like, um, Yang deciding to use a gauntlet instead of her arm anymore, or, you know, Blake cutting her hair. You know, why did Ruby decide to style her hair? <laughs> I mean, it's small stuff. It's not really plot relevant, but you would have thought them hiding the fix of Gamble would have been something they would have focused on because they hit it. I mean, we don't know. There might be a moment where we actually see, we hear something or yeah. between the two of them because I mean, we're really early in, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just really worried about this runtime because we still got the open uh, ending credits and those take up at least almost two minutes. So we technically only have, I don't know. I'm not good at math or off the cuff. So <laughs> I'll just keep on going. This is the stuff we saw in like trailer. Not all of this. Mm -hmm. They focused on they it. They did focus on it. Meant that as yeah. a compliment. It's not a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alpha Squad. Now there's pros new outfit. Clear. Proceeding on foot. You've all got fancy new scrolls, so don't forget to use them. Keep your eyes and ears open. I want an update if you encounter the target. Huh. Alpha out. Huh? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, not used to the new hair yet. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, bad? Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, it's good. Great, even. Man, I did not sign up to be a Oh, my God! Yeah, well, the rest of us maybe say you all the time. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Everybody wanted that. <laughs> oh. Oh, poor Weiss. Oh. That was... Everybody wanted that. Everybody wanted that. <laughs> Without heating or a projected aura, the cold of Solitas can kill you in a matter of hours. Oh, wow. I suddenly don't feel as bad about leaving Oscar behind. Can we talk about that again? Oh, bo oh, oh. What about it? Uh oh. We're really not going to tell Ironwood what happened to Oz? What we learned about Jin? About Salem? We are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I. Ooh! <laughs> It's just... <laughs> oh, okay. 
that was legit Yang having having like a flirty attack. Like okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. That was gay panic. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because they're in the cold, but it really looked like Blake blushed. We have we'll have to go over. We're gonna be going back to look yeah, at all of them. We that. will have to be looking at that over our, our overview. I it's so funny that they're supposed to have warmer clothes and Ruby's cold. Um, but we, we got a little bit of world building here. So the cold of solid toss can kill you really quickly. Of hours, yes. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I guess that's kind of realistic. I'm, I'm guessing if you were in the coldest parts of the world, in, in our world, you would probably be dead in a couple of hours. Um, notice Yang is not cold at all. <laughs> I wonder why. Um, but everybody was wondering if this was going to come up. That if they were going to confront Ruby about uh, lying to Ironwood. And apparently, I guess they're kind of hinting, Oscar definitely did not take it well. Which, um, I think we talked about in our overview for Chapter 2, which will be coming soon. That Oscar's young. He doesn't know Ironwood like the other characters do. He doesn't have Oz in his head right now to tell him about James. <laughs> So, he's very, you know, young and impressionable, so he probably gets the, you know, what we saw in Chapter 2, he's probably like, oh, this guy's a really good guy, you know, why yeah. are we lying to him? So, but, they, you know, the trailer did hint that this volume is going to deal with a lot of trust and stuff. So, it was stated, like, when they were um, explaining the volume, that they were going to find characters that they thought they could trust, but they couldn't, and tr characters they thought couldn't trust that they can so that's where this is going it's going to be really a tr like a, a trust thing it's, it's, i'm guessing especially with ruby's character because she is the leader she's the one that's got to make those calls but uh let's see where this conversation goes i'm kind of interested how her team is going to react to it we will but you saw how things looked when we flew in atlas the general's heart seems to be in the right place but that doesn't mean we should trust him yet we need to play along for a while yes. before we make any major decisions. Okay. How did Oscar feel about that? Uh, probably shouldn't keep running around with an ancient relic on a keychain, you know? But... I know you'll keep it safe in Atlas. Ruby, hiding things from Ironwood, doesn't that feel like what Ozpin did to us? Gotta say... Still not really used to working with other huntsmen in the field. But you were on a team before, weren't you? A long time ago. I just found working alone tends to be for the best. Well, I think that's a shame. People are going to ship them so much. <laughs> Alpha here. Good luck an and update. bad luck. <laughs> ice tunnels seem clear. We should be approaching the actual mine any minute now. This is so exciting! It feels like we're an actual huntsman team! I, um, uh, like what you did with your outfit, then. <laughs> we should probably stay focused on the mission. Oh, poor Nora. <laughs> oh, okay. I like your outfit, too. <laughs> hmm. Bravo, checking in. <laughs> Ten, a bit of a snag. There's been a cave-in in the main entrance. Not sure if it's recent or was caused by the original accident. Either way, we'll have to do a little problem solving. Understood. Uh-oh, what's black Let here? Let us know if you need anything. You okay? I just realized where we are. Oh. This mine was closed after an ex oh, oh, come on. <laughs> explosion. Okay. I remember this disaster. Okay, so... Ooh, an explosion. Was this the explosion that killed Ilya's parents? Hmm. I wonder. Oof. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's... Cause there's a lot of mining accidents we've... You know, that's been kind of... Talked about. Talked about and all that. I just, I was, I hadn't said it, but I was kind of wondering how Blake was going to react being in the mines. Um, I gotta say, Faye, like, I always expected them to be, like, a little more darker, like, theme-wise. Like, you know, just a place you really didn't want to be, where it kind of looks like almost, in some areas, just a typical ice cave. But, um, yeah, let's, let, I'm, I'm really... Curious. Oscar, or rather, 
I remember how furious it made my father. I wish I could take back the years of pain my family has caused the Faunus. Oh, and all of my character. complacency in it. This society is set up for Faunus to be at the bottom, and humans are willing participants. They benefit from doing nothing to help us. But there are still those who actively abuse us. Anyway, I didn't come over here looking to solve systemic societal issues. Harriet found a gap in the rubble we think one of you could fit through. Ideally, someone with a knack for seeing in the dark? Uh, oh. <laughs> Poor Blake. So this is great character development for Wise, because we remember how she was in Volume 1. Boy, do we remember those days. <laughs> Back when I think Weiss was everyone's least favorite member of Team Ruby. Um... <sighs> Is it me, or, like, when her character art was first shown, the emblem on her coat was looked a bit different? Now it looks like it's just pretty much her symbol. Because this morning it looked a little more different in the art. Maybe, I'm, maybe I just saw it wrong. But, um... Looking at it now in the engine, and just, like... Yeah, I feel sorry for Weiss cosplayers who want to try and do this <laughs> one. Because... The outfit's great, a lot of belts, but that 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 wig, eh, that's that's going to be a hazard. <laughs> okay, let's see how let's see what happens. Of course. Uh, what, what was that? All right, Blake, take a look around. Is there any dust in the immediate area? Mine cards, uh, debris. No dust, though. Great, then it should be safe to blast our way through. Okay, heading back. Oh gosh, that almost jump scared oh. me. <laughs> Blake, stand back. Ah, these buffering things are killing me. <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that jump scared me a little. I, I even saw the, the thing say something about a creature, but I didn't expect for it to come into my face. <laughs> so this is the first time we've seen, like, a geist since the beginning of Volume 4, I believe. Oh, boy. So our first real fight in the dust mines. Um, they could cause an explosion. <laughs> um... <laughs> Boy, I don't know. Okay, so we got some electricity dust. I'm guessing the red is fire dust. The purple is gravity dust. Um, I don't see any more. I don't see anything else. So I'm wondering why they had Yang give that look. Was she worried about Blake? or I really thought she was going to be walking up behind her there for a sec. <laughs> I really did. But, um... So... Ooh, I just wonder how this is going to go. Like, is this, is this mission going to be like a total failure or. Because it's not. I, I don't know. I just, I just. I've got a really foreboding feeling. I don't know why. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. Don't let it get away! Huh? Ooh, the new. Ooh, these things. <laughs> Punch it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, now all oh, oh yeah. That's ooh. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Action in the new outfit. I love it. Oh she can she can plant bombs now? <laughs> Seriously? Oh, th now that is cool. I didn't even like if if there was if she was like if you were able to see her planting them as she was hitting them. I completely missed that. That is really 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 cool. They're wow. Okay. So I'm guessing now like the red like because I think she always she's always used red dust in her gauntlets. Yeah, I think so. So now like. She can convert bombs when she hit. Okay, that's that's a pretty cool power. That's a pretty cool weapon upgrade. 
<laughs> oh. Oh, she can switch the blade. Oh, that's cool. That's that's awesome. And yeah, it's a boomerang. <laughs> it's a bladed boomerang. Oh, is this his? That must be his semblance. So he can. So he can freeze stuff. He can like stop stuff. Okay, so we've seen now we've seen his now we've seen his symbol. Okay, so that's a pretty cool semblance. Um, I'm I'm guessing just from what I'm watching that Harriet has some kind of speed semblance, kind of like Ruby. Kind of makes me hope they become speed rivals in a way. Um, I'm interested. Like, I I want to see what the the monk can do. I, I'm just gonna call him a monk until we get like a until a, we know what he is. Yeah. <laughs> um, really interested to see what his semblance is. <laughs> She, she looks so happy. <laughs> um, I believe they said her name was Elm. Um, I, wa I really want to know what her symbol is. She's a hammer user like Nora. Um, Sean looks pretty freaked out. Um, <laughs> I think that's just a little animation thing. But um, yeah, I'm really interested to see how this is going to go. I, I hope there's not like a cave in or something, but... Oh boy. Um okay, let's let's go. <laughs> that was kinda of funny. Oh. oh Why do you stun her? Oh that is cool. He's got like Wow. A very head first approach. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just kind of our style. <laughs> He's trying to impress them. <laughs> that was a funny little scream from Rand. One left. I got it. Yeah, she's got like she's got a speed thing. I like the Whoa. Uh, <laughs> someone makes you super fast. Just like me. <laughs> very cool. Well, based on your reaction time, I'd say I'm a little faster. Oh, that's exactly what. Change the target. Yeah. All squads have Pause. Our... Really interesting Crow's new outfit. Like I'm sure everybody who who cosplays Crow is like studying big time. He's got a nice. He's got a like vine pattern on, like little pattern detail on it. Um, are like really like it's almost like a color swap of his older outfit in a way, like because you know how it was more kind of the white on the outside, now it's more of the hmm, you could kind of say, hmm, I'll have to go over that in our overview video. It's it, I wonder if his outfit swap is kind of a symbolic change, like now the white is more on the out inside and dark. I don't know. I might just be reaching for things, but um, so I was kind of right. Harriet and Ruby might have a, a a speed rivalry to go to go. We still don't know if she's a faunus though. I can't tell I if can't she is either. or not. Yeah. Position. That is a fishing pole. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely the lucky fisherman. Oh, and here we go. yeah. His weapon and the fishing pole. <laughs> Wait, stop! Oh. Oh. Okay. Darn it. Target escaped. Last scene headed east. Thanks for the call out. That could have been bad. I wouldn't thank me. Ah, come on. My semblance brings misfortune. Sometimes I can't keep it under control. That so? Well, hey, don't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> People are good. I can already say Lucky Charms is is alive. <laughs> My semblance is good fortune. Lucky Everybody, you, huh? Did he just wink at him? Charlie, 
Bravo. You should be able to cut off the target at the heart of the mine. Crow and I won't be far behind. Pause. Please pause. Everybody <laughs> called that. That his semblance is good fortune. And he winked at Crow. Lucky Charms is alive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wow. Oh wow. People who are already shipping this are are going nuts right now. Okay. Okay, so that is going to be a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. Cuz I wonder if it'll cancel it out. Or balance it. Yeah, that Yeah, wow. I mean, it it, it wasn't <sighs> it wasn't too much of a stretch because, you know, the the rabbit's foot. The, the fact that his name is Clover and his his symbol is a four-leaf clover and, you know, the horseshoe, all these symbols of good luck. And everybody was already guessing because of his weapon, which we didn't really get a good look at it in episode one. Um, though John said in episode two, it was a fish, fishing a fishing pole, pole. guy. Yeah. Fishing <laughs> pole guy. So he's, de he's for sure the lucky fisherman from Aesop's fables for sure. Um, just wow. That, that kind of, that was really loud. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, let's See if we learn any more. Oh, wow. Oh, it's hot in there. Guys! Everyone use caution. This room is highly active with dust energy. Triggering it could ruin the launch site. And vaporize us. How is that always second with you? <laughs> I thought the target was supposed to be he's evil. here. <gasps> Yang, don't use your semblance in here. Oh, this. It added dust to its body? Oh, boy. How are we supposed to. Okay, I guess oh. we're going. To... That's a pretty cool sandwich. Okay. So is that his name? Bind. Marrow. Yeah. Okay, so we were seeing some high class teamwork here. Okay, so her semblance is she can ground herself like a rock almost. Well, that makes sense because her name's Elm, and everybody is saying that she's based off um the um the life tree, the the world tree, Yadrasil. Or however you pronounce it, there's different ways to pronounce it. So she's rooting herself. Yeah. So that that kind of makes sense. Um, them stealing the spotlight here a little bit, um, though not as much as I was worried they would. They they did say that Team Ruby would would see like the gap between them and you know more experienced huntsmen. So that, that's the point here. But uh, I have to say, this is a really ship-heavy episode. We've had Bumblebee, we've had Renora, and now we've got Lucky Charms. <laughs> like, just, wow. Um, they're really being very broad here. So we've had that, the straight couple, and now, really, like, the really obvious same-sex couple with Bumblebee. And now a little teasing with this. I, I don't know. This, this <laughs> episode's really ship-heavy. Just wow. Yeah, it comes back. I do like her. She's per Unlike Ruby's, hers, she's kind of the Flash. <laughs> but she is faced off <laughs> Ruby's fangirling. Crap. Crap. What would you Good guys luck. do without me? Uh. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. Dang fish and hole. He literally fished it out. 
He literally <laughs> fished it out. That's kind of funny. So I have a feeling with the time that we've got left, this episode's probably going to end just right after the after this fight. Um, I like Harriet. She's probably the only one out of the Aesop's that I really, really like the most right now. Um, I wonder why she needs the whatever this like this apparatus or whatever she's wearing. I wonder why she needs it. Does it keep her semblance? Like, is she kind of like I know she's obviously based off the tortoise and the hare. But is she kind of like the Flash? And if she uses her semblance too strongly, it'll like screw up time or something? And this keeps it in check, maybe? Maybe. I. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot going on in this episode. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Like, just wow. Okay, let's see where we can get now. <laughs> Uppercut. Well, Harriet. Wow, she's really fast. <laughs> I thought you said your summons was like mine. It is. I've seen other speed summonses before. That that was different. I think there's more going on than you think. Uh -oh. Wait until she sees what she could do with her eyes. <laughs> Oh, she made Blake laugh. Lucky catch, huh? Hmm. No. I chalked that one up to talent. That yeah, Crow. Control. Come on. This still give cool. them some credit. Mission accomplished. Elves carrying <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, thanks for the lift. Uh-oh. Everybody loves this guy. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. Is it? Ooh, Look. hello, hello, Tyrion. This guy's Who dead. You? Me? Oh, well, I'm someone just like you. Someone who wants to mix things up around here. <laughs> this guy's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Instant death. He's dead. Ugh. Oh. That was a good episode. Yes. That was really, really good. That was better than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Um, still wish it had been longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, it. look who wrote it. So, uh, uh, And look who directed it. So uh, definitely, uh, this was definitely a Miles and Carrie episode. It, it came off just like how it usually does. Um. Wow, we some have a lot to go over. Yeah, it's going to be a really long <laughs> overview video. Um, I'd say Bravo, um, Thomas, you may get your wish on Crow being bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was wow. Um, yeah, just uh, I'm speechless right now. Um, great. Uh, Great fights, um, great character interaction. Um, I think that m this may have had the loudest Bumblebee moment in series history. That was definitely one of, like, everybody wanted Yang to react to yeah. Blake Singer. And we got it. <laughs> Very big time. Um, the only criticisms I have is how fast they skipped over the changes. Yeah. Like, I really would have liked seeing Blake cut her hair like, in a very Mulan or Korra way. Because um, to me, having it half off, half off, half and off screen kind of takes away from the meaning of it. Um, we'll probably... Uh, we, I guess we'll never know if it was any part of Yang's arm used to make the fix because they didn't show it. They did focus on it when, it when she used it. But the symbolism's still there. That's what really matters of, of the symbolism, whether we saw it or not, which I had a feeling we wouldn't see it. Um, 
<laughs> poor like Jean's already wanting to impress these guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not too upset that we didn't see his haircut because there was no real story meaning behind it. More more so that maybe Jean wants to look more professional, maybe. Um, so uh, some upgrades that we saw. Um, not only does Yang have a new gauntlet on her robotic arm, but she can plant bombs now with, with punches. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think we... S we may have missed it, but I don't think we saw an upgrade for Weiss yet. I, don't I didn't notice anything yet. Um, no upgrade for Blake, it seems, besides Gamble being fixed. Unless they just didn't show this episode. Ruby can now switch the blade. It can move. Yeah, yeah, it can move now. That's pretty cool. Um, John, of course, has his shield. Um, I noticed Nora's uh, hammer was glowing when she used it, but I don't really know what kind of upgrade that is. Ren can now, like, his weapons were already climbing, at, like, climbers' axes, pretty much. Yeah, but now it's, they're like, um... It has, like, you, you can make grappling. Them, yeah, they have grappling wire now. So, uh, that's cool. Um, I, it was pretty cool that they did. So, I don't know if it was ever confirmed in a past volume, but we definitely now know that Blake has night vision. Well, she did say the font is getting dark. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, she but we've never seen that. we've never we've seen never her, seen her actually do yeah, it. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. So, I'm still wondering why, when Blake went off to go ahead, why they had that shot of Yang. Was she concerned? Or I think she was. Yeah, I was kind of hoping Blake was like going to turn around and there stood Yang. <laughs> that would have been cool. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry. If anyone denies that there's something between Blake and Yang now, I'm sorry. Yang w was... Totally flabbergasted by the haircut, and Blake blushed. We're gonna have to watch it again, but I think Blake definitely blushed. Uh, just wow, this was a really like besides my a couple of criticisms, this is a really good episode. <laughs> um, I have no idea what's gonna happen next week. Um, That's gonna be a long week. <laughs> yeah, but uh. Not as long as last week because we yeah. knew the, the we knew the outfit changes were coming. Um, so one thing I definitely that I personally predicted that I wanted to happen seems like that's where they're going is a kind of rivalry between Ruby and Harriet because of the speed. Though it seems like there may be more to Ruby's semblance than we ever knew. Who knew? Who knows? But um, you got anything to say? Mm -hmm. All right. Well. <laughs> I think we're going to go ahead and end this here. I guess we'll record our overview either later today or sometime tomorrow, maybe. Um, but, uh, so we can put this on Patreon and all that. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to uh, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Um, <clears throat> all the links will be in the description for the Patreon, for Twitter, for Etsy, all that. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.